What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the new Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by Tina Christel. Tina is an amazing, amazing human being. Uh, let me just give you guys a real quick uh, bio of her. Um, she is an Akashic Records reader, which I've done readings with. So as my wife, a lot of my inner circle. Um, she's a heart math trainer and coach, which is very near and dear to my heart. She's also a Reiki master, and as she calls herself, a shaman in training. But I will tell all you guys that she's actually a living, breathing shaman. Before we jump into this podcast, though, I'm going to turn it over to her, and her and I are going to do some heart center clearing. So with that said, Tina, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Thank you, Jay. That's beautiful. Uh, we are going to, uh, I believe that uh, heart coherence uh, is something that everyone on the planet should know about and do it as often as possible, but particularly before we begin anything uh, uh, like this, uh, any kind of meeting. So we're going to uh, begin to breathe in with the attention on our heart. And many times I'll put two fingers in the area of my heart just, just to bring attention. And we're, what we're trying to do is pull our attention out of our mind and into our heart because that's where our wisdom resides so once we pull that beautiful energy down into our heart we're going to begin to breathe five seconds in and five seconds out we'll do that for just a moment we can do this with our eyes open or closed And once we get into a nice rhythm, I then like to bring in what we call in heart math a renewing feeling, which can be joy, can be grace, ease, appreciation, love, any of those feelings. And you can get that through a visual of something that has already happened and affected you or just the thought of being in a hammock on the beach, <laughs> whatever makes you happy. And now that we bring that beautiful feeling, that beautiful renewing emotion into our heart with each breath, we're gonna just do that for about one minute. How does that feel? <laughs> Beautiful. Amazing. I was actually just, just brings everything. I was picturing, you know, you said whatever brings you joy and happiness. And truthfully, I was picturing you and I communicating because the last oh. time it was so profound. And, you know, so in the, obviously, as you and I were talking off the air about other things, um, but let's get more um, into you. So as I do on this podcast, normally, um, before we get into the, the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts, um, I kind of just ask, you know, how did Tina Christel get on the Jay Campbell podcast here today? Well, uh, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Um, I've always been spiritual. I've always been what I would consider uh, a shaman, like you said, uh, which everybody is. I've uh, always been connected to the earth. Uh, but I got hung up in, and I've always been an entrepreneur, by the way, uh, but I got hung up in the corporate world for a long time, knowing that it wasn't really where I was supposed to be, even though I had my own business um, 
it, it wasn't where I was supposed to be. And I had a, um, a traumatic experience. I lost my son six years ago. He was 23 years old, my youngest son. And uh, it, it brought me to my knees. Uh, and it, I, at that moment, I realized that it was time for me to do what I'm supposed to be doing uh, with re without regard to fear. Um, of what people would think and without regard to my own fear about um, embracing who I really am. So I did and I pretty much kind of uh, put myself in a little hole and I started reading books like one after the other and studying and became a Reiki master and working with tuning forks and crystal bowls and uh, started my shaman work and then I did the Akashic Records uh, uh, training and found that it was really, it really spoke to my heart. Um, but really the catalyst to everything was my heart math training. And uh, that's what brought me into my heart and out of my head. And it was truly the biggest transformation that I made because of the grief that I had about my son. And so I knew that that had to be the core of everything that I did. And it is now. And so many times a day, I'm doing that similar exercise. And I think everyone, and especially children, yeah. need to know this um, because it's a way of coping and it's a way of getting uh, through stress and keeping our resilience. So, so you were, you know, among one of my very first uh, Akashic Records um, sessions as a guide. Yeah, and no, there's no coincidence to that. As I said, you know, we're kind of uh, all being led. I mean, it's an amazing time to be alive. I mean, I have a million questions for you. We can go a lot of different directions, but I kind of want to stay with you um, because I think it's very poignant. I think it's very important that people recognize, you know, there were a lot of things you said in that, but you lost your son, right? So as a mother, uh, and obviously I, I, I'm not a mother, but as I was telling you off the air, I'm really doing a, 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 I would say a important but bang up job of le learning to integrate and balance my feminine energies with my masculine energies. I've learned so much about the idea that, you know, we really aren't sexes, right? Like we've defined ourselves as male and female, but the energy, you know, our base essence, our divine essence is our soul, our spirit. And so these bodies are just avatars. And it's like when you understand that really as a base essence being, you are a soul, a spirit, you know, if you're going to think of it as um, a physical understanding, it, you know, worrying electrons, right? Waves, standing waves. And it's like, you know, from a quantum physics angle. So it's like integrating your, your masculine and your feminine. You, you have the same amount of masculine and feminine energy as I do. And, and, and people need to learn, and it needs a poor choice of words, you know, choose to learn that this is all true and to define ourselves by our physical, sexual, you know, connotations, male, female, is really at this point nonsense. Um, but back to your son, losing your son, what I've learned in my limited experience now in the world as you know, a beginning shaman too and doing what I do is that it's all about integrating trauma. And we're all born with certain levels of it, obviously past lives, what goes on in the womb, then when we come out and we're conditioned by our parents and the things that we learn and obviously society um, and as you know, there's transgenerational trauma. You have like, quote unquote, you know, I hate that word, but that's what they say, the sins of the father and the mother and the sins of the mother and father, you know, of them. So there's a lot of trauma that a human being undergoes and it's integration of that trauma that will really shape a person to really truly, you know, quote unquote, raise their vibration and, you know, integrate the energies of most masculine and feminine. So I said all that so you could kind of talk about how traumatic it was for you to lose your son and then have to recognize that, okay, this is part of something that my soul chose to deal with and experience. So now what do I do? So talk about that. Yes. Uh, yes, it, it, it was. Uh, when I said it brought me to my knees, that's probably putting it mildly, even though I may not have outwardly um, had a uh, reaction, uh, but internally, uh, my my youngest son and I were spiritually the most connected, wow. um, and that was uh, and and my older two children would acknowledge that that you know he and I were very much spiritually uh, on the same plane, and uh, <coughs> for him, life 
was very uh, harsh um, on this planet. I think that he was a being that had not spent a lot of time on earth. Uh, that's my feeling anyway. Sure. And uh, when I, when I lost him, I, I had to go through the process of being a human and being a mother who lost their son. Right. But still understanding that there was this, uh, he went home and, and trying to be okay with, with his um, uh, departure was just not happening in, in quickly enough for me. Sure. Um, and so, uh, but, what I, but what I did know is that I, I knew that my grief would affect him spiritually. And I knew right. that. And so I tried um, my best. And it took me about a year and a half to two years before, see, even now I'm, you can hear my voice. Yeah. Um, before I could truly feel a, a calm about mm -hmm. it all. Uh, but I also knew, and he started sending me messages. In, That's what in I was just going to ask you. Beginning. Yeah. And so this was the beginning of me realizing um, that I had had this gift uh, of, of hearing and understanding and knowing all along. I just didn't choose to, to use it. But when he started sending me these messages, he kept saying, Mom, I'm right here. Mom, right, right. shake right. it off. It's, it's good. I'm with you. We can do this. You're supposed to let this help you get to the next level. This was not to break you. This is help to help move you. Right. And when I started understanding that, and I still had to work through those human emotions, of course, um, I started saying, okay, this is, this is what, this was the plan. Right? right. Even though it's hard, you know, when you, I think when you're in spirit mode, right? You right. just say, oh, this sounds cool and fun. It'll be fine. Right. But when you're here with your feet on the ground, it's not fun. It's not. And every one of us have been through all of this. Right. right? Not, right. not this particular thing, but through this kind of loss, heartbreak, uh, you know, uh, trauma. So what the message you know, the final message of all of this was, is that we came here for experiences, right. particularly right. emotional ones, right. particularly, right. right? And it's all about growing our soul. It's all about the experience for our soul. So, and we're growing it right now. Like our, so we don't go, we don't go back and then say, okay, now I'm going to go back again. And now I'm a better, different person. We're growing it every day by everything we do through our vibrations and our frequency of how we act, how we think. Um, and how, you know, how we feel. So those are the three things that are, you know, in my opinion, uh, what's, what's causing our, our soul to uh, absorb all this goodness, yeah. right? So that's why I want everyone to feel, you know, understand and, and feel this, this heart connection, because then you can literally feel the difference between being in your mind, which is all about task oriented, Right. And being who you really are, and that's about understanding compassion for other people and their soul and their walk in this life, because we all have our own path and we're all at a different place. It's profoundly elegant. I can't really question anything you said, but I do want to go even deeper. Um, what I have learned in my work and, and, and what you said, we're all, as I always say, I always say we're all walking the same path. Some of us slower and some of us faster than others but it doesn't it doesn't equate to judgment or blame or anything else right because again as you said we choose our own paths and as souls we know everything right we've obviously in third dimensional realm or experience incarnation have chosen to forget you know the veil of forgetfulness but um the reality is is that as you have done and as i have done and people like us have done doing the work um, you learn that you're really just a sold infinite being and the sold infinite being isn't going to die. And, you know, these physical bodies go, of course, but recognition of that. And again, you said it best. It's not easy. And when you are traumatized and again, as you know, out on the external, we have, we can't forget the, our friends on the external, you know, they want you to be in traumatized victim, you know, save your Absolutely. consciousness template, right? So that's where they want you to be. So the work for all of us is to recognize that we're perfect, whole, 
and complete as souls, no matter what happens. And so you can't focus on what happened to you in the past. You can't think about what may happen to you in the future. The only thing that really exists is the, you know, what I call the zero point moment. And so knowing that, knowing that, Tina, this is where, like, I really think that if we could just get more people understanding this, that death is not the end. You know, I always think of the Lord of the Rings trilogy when Gandalf talks to one of the hobbits and he says, oh, no, Frodo, death, that's just another path, one we must all take, which continues, you know, and that's the statement. Again, Hollywood's always giving people little snippets, but the truth is, is that when you recognize that you are not going to die, your, your meat suit, these avatar bodies will likely expire. Although I'm sure you could, we could debate that depending on how advanced you are, you could live a long time, right? That's right. But, but, but ultimately knowing that you're never going to die, your being exists infinitely. The fear of that finite, limited experience of things I got to do before I die. You know, like I have friends but if I die, who's going to take care of my mom? You know, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And it's like, no, dude, everybody chose. Everybody is responsible and personally accountable for their soul. That's it. Stop. Yes. You're not responsible for other people. And so that's, to me, the biggest hurdle in human existence, in physical form, to recognize that death is a virtual likelihood of the physical body only and that you are forever. And so like your son, it's traumatizing that you lose him in physical, but he was telling you, mom, I'm still here. You can talk to me. You can send me love and light and messages to my soul. Continue to do it. And so that's, this, that's what we all have to learn. And when you do learn that, wow, the limitations yes. that drop in physical are, 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 are phenomenal. Yes. Yes. There was a, there was a, uh beautiful moment with him uh, when I was in Chaco Canyon in New, New Mexico uh, on a camping trip. And he kept dropping things on, on, on the path uh, of one of the That's hikes so that I was awesome. doing. And I kept saying, because he comes as the dragonfly. So first out in the middle, and dragonflies love water, right? That's so, so we're out awesome. in the middle of New Mexico. My, my, Monica's mom comes as a hummingbird. <laughs> yes. Hummingbirds are very, very uh, 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 popular. Yes. <laughs> they really are. Yeah. Um, but he comes as a dragonfly, and they are attracted to water. And here I'm on, on this on this uh, uh, hike, no water in sight, nowhere. And this dragonfly comes and comes kind of right in front of me. And I was like, "Is that a dragonfly?" Wow. Turns around, comes right back, and sort of hovers for a minute, and then goes back. And I'm like, "Okay." Thank you, sweetheart. That's and awesome. so I walk a little further and then he sends me right on the trail, like no one else, and, and it's not from here, is an orange tourmaline rock. Wow. Right on the trail. And I couldn't believe it. I picked it up. So we, anyway, we got to the, one of the ruins and mm -hmm. I went and sat by myself in one of the places and his arms, he, I physically felt him. And I just, tears just poured down my face. It was one of the most profound That's experiences so I've ever had with him. It was, it was really fantastic. So, you know, um, if, if you believe, uh, it, it happens whether you believe it or not, but if you believe it, then you allow it. Right. So, right. so, um, you know, once I started saying, okay, get the practical, you know, out of your mind thing and started really focusing on, on my heart, I started allowing anything to flow right. and right. including my life. Of course. To flow the way it's supposed to. Right. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and, that, and I can add to that. And, and again, our, our lives are similar. I haven't had anyone die in my immediate family. Many deaths around me. I would say actually that my soul had to experience a couple of close, you know, uh, dark nights of the soul to get to where I am now to truly awaken. But last year, and I think I told you about this when you and I first did our reading together, um, I went to Peru, right? I mean, this is all from my trip to Peru. And it was the most profoundly revelational, soul sparking, you know, energetic. I mean, so much happened to me, but our guide, our indigenous guide from um, Lake Titicaca, who spoke, yes. who spoke, you know, a number of languages. And of course the native indigenous language of, um, uh, I forget the, the, the indigenous right there, but it doesn't matter. Um, and he said to us, and it was my wife and my sales director for my real estate team and his wife, 
And all four of us, by the way, were energetically changed. But he said to us, as we were on Lake Titicaca, and he knew that we were very spiritually advanced people because of what we were reading on the bus ride and when he picked us up the day before. So he felt kind of compelled to take us and to do a ceremony on the lake. And again, there was, you know, like 80 people in this excursion, but he just took us four. And he knew, and he told us when he was on the water, but we had a lake ceremony, um, Tina, and the lake spoke to us. And it spoke to us in a way, and you know, people ask me, were you using plant medicine? No, I wasn't using plant medicine. We were just praying. It was an invocation. We were on the edge of the water. But all of us felt the water move through our being. And every one of us was in tears. And we cannot even explain the level of tears. But what he explained to me, and this goes back to what you just said. And, and again, people can watch this and they can doubt this. Like you said, you can disbelieve all you want. It's all true. Um, is that everything is sentient, everything is conscious, everything has life. The water, the trees, the wind, you know, obviously the, the fish in the, in the lake, but I mean, everything has consciousness. And so when you have what they call in their culture, ani, which is a divine sacred reverence for all things, um, it's, you get that reciprocity. You get what, you know, I call the cosmic mirror. You know, what you give off is what you reflect. And so when you carry that love and that sacred you know, divine understanding and grace of all things, you're going to get that experience back in your life. And that's when you can really start communicating and connecting with, you know, everything. I mean, honestly, like you, people are going to laugh, but I'm just going to say it right now. Like when I go out now in nature, I literally give thanks to the trees. I will sit in my backyard under my tree and say, please, you know, I have little specific invocations, but I'll say to the tree, you know, thank you for everything you're doing for earth, for the environment around my house. And then I'll say, if you want to shower me, you know, in your love and your affection, do it. And I am not kidding you. I can be sitting there and they do drop down like that dew or that mist or that, you know, liquid aqueous solution that gets all over your body. And I remember having that happen to me as a child, but then being so, ew, it's sap or whatever, you know, and running away when not recognizing that that's their connection to you. If you would just open your heart to receive it. That's right. The love, love comes from all those different ways. It, it is unity. Uh, it's a unity consciousness with yes. everything, you know, the, the, the feather, the fur, the, you know, four legged, the two legged, we're, right. we're all connected. And if we think we're not, then, uh, you know, life will find a way to show you. Totally true. And as you raise your vibration, right. And, and again, you know, I just did a video for my audience on YouTube because people are always asking me, they don't understand what it is. And I said, it's basically just treating people with the golden rule, being kind, concerned, compassionate, caring, loving, forgiving, doing those things. Again, you know, it's the, again, the easiest way for people, for most people on average to understand is the golden rule, right? Do unto others. But when you live that experience, you know, you start elevating, you know, from a quantum physics standpoint, your energetic capacity and, you know, higher vibration is when you receive that connectivity to the ether right? To the animals, as you said, you know, to everything. I mean, like, as I started really focusing on raising my vibration, my relationship with my animals went off the charts. Like my dog is so connected, both of my dogs now, but my one dog is like my spirit animal, you know? And, and so, as you know, you, you know, all these things, I mean, you're a Reiki master, you've done all this work and stuff like that, but you know, people, some people are going to listen to this podcast and they're going to be like, Jay's jumped the shark. <laughs> right. And I, and I'm going to be like, no, I'll, you know, I'll go on my YouTube channel if my audience people don't do it. And I'll say, no, you need to do more inner work because yeah. anyone, as you know, who's done this work recognizes these things to be true. And, and again, it's not even a matter of believing it's a, just a knowing. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's acknowledging. And what you said about how treating people, the golden rule and all of that, I would like to add on to that because that is absolutely the case. And, and also knowing that we're, you know, we're, we're allowing everyone to be on their path. Uh, and, right. and if we've drawn someone in, it's because you have put out the frequency exactly. uh, uh, of, of bringing that person to you. So your next question is, why or how did I do this? And then that's that inner work. Right. And I always like to add, too, that it's not just about how we treat others. It's how we treat ourselves. Absolutely. Our, our thoughts are, are, are what's also bringing that vibration out. So our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves beating us up for saying something or remembering something, right. keeping on remembering something that we didn't like, 
all of that needs to be tossed out. I mean, and it's all about those thoughts, being, those beautiful thoughts happening. And then it is easy to treat others in that way as well. By the way, that's the most profound thing that you're going to say on the podcast. No one, none of us are going to say anything because again, you know, in my work, I've recognized that until you love and trust yourself and you unconditionally love and trust yourself, you really truthfully, and you know this, you cannot love another being equally until that love for self, again, I always say self, like higher self is, you know, unconditional and unstoppable and unyielding and all those other things. And it's, you're right. You know, that's where the work comes in. And that's why, you know, all the greatest books ever, of course, in miracles, you know, the book that I'm reading now, mastering alchemy. I mean, you have to learn to love and trust yourself. And most of us, as you know, growing up are told by our parents, by society, by the matrix that you're not worthy that someone's better than you, someone looks better than you, your body's not good enough. I mean, I could go on and on, right? But learning right. that you are perfect, as my wife Monica always says, you're perfect, whole, and complete as you are. And right. recognition of that is the gift to get through life at the highest level because no one, when you're at that level, no one or no thing can take you off you know, your path because it doesn't matter what they say. That's right. That's right. It's what keeps us centered. It's like that, that tree in the wind in the right. storm, right? It doesn't break. It moves with it. And that's what resilience is about. You know, when mm -hmm. we're resilient, we always can find our center. And that's what life is about. Regardless of what's happening around you, you can always find your center. Uh, and when you have that vibration of that inner love and that inner acceptance of yourself, you draw in the people of that same vibration and, exactly. and pretty soon you have this beautiful pod this beautiful tribe of people who are all lifting each other and and it, it there's nothing more beautiful than that so so beautiful yes happening. so beautiful and yes and you know in learning that and you and i know you've learned this and and you know and i want to talk about a lot of other things with you how much time do you have are, we, are you okay to go to 11 uh, absolutely okay beautiful okay so um, in learning what you just said, in tracking your vibe attracts your tribe, higher vibration against the law of attraction. The law, it's really the law of resonance, but we call it the law of attraction. But you know, what you put out is what comes back. So again, your high vibration. And again, I, for most people, I like to use this cause it's scalable and understandable for I people, but, you know, the yeah. Hawkins scale, you know, when you're in the 450 to 500 range, you're in the re reverence, understanding, love, benign, joy, serenity those power words, um, you're going to bring those type of people into your life. But as you've learned, and as I've learned in, in many unfortunate instances, um, you also have to learn to let go of the people that are not going to be there. That's and right. hardest part. Exactly. And that has been my, and I, I never even used the word difficult or challenges or anything anymore because they're all learning experiences, right? But like that for me as a big heart person, to let go of those who are unwilling to walk that path has been the problem for me. Again, I'll just use it as a problem because it's just been a learning experience, but right. So talk about that. Talk about what are some solutions or some, you know, what you find um, that you can do as a heart-based, you know, high vibration yeah. being to be okay with letting go of relationships that don't serve you anymore. Yes. Well, I think at first it starts with this, this work, where you're centered so that you can be in the presence of, of those, those people enough to give them the opportunity to rise to the occasion. Right. So, so first you want to do this inner work and, uh, and, and you also want to be in a place where you can send compassion. Right. And, and, and when we do that, many times it helps people to take that next step. Right. But then there are people who are, who, who can't hear that, they can't feel that, and they, they simply can't go there. It's just not possible for them. And I've had to do this in my own life. And more times than I care to uh, really talk about. Sure. And, and, you know, there's this moment of guilt sometimes, like, did I give them the chance? And, and then I just said, you know, no, I, I think I did. So, um, you know, this is always, like I said, this is the hardest part is did I give them enough of an opportunity? 
And at some point you do have to just step away. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the first things that uh, I, I would always, you know, say is to, to someone um, that I'm having a difficult time with is, would you like me to uh, give you my experience of what's happening here? Or would you like me to just hold space for you? And when we can say those words and kind of give them the choice, uh, that gives us also a choice. Uh, because we can do that for, to a certain degree, but then we have to, they say, no, we don't, I don't want your opinion, I'm fine. Okay, that's great, I'll hold the space for you. But then there comes a time where you won't do that in their presence anymore, where you have right. to physically stay away because it does affect, you know, we have this field around us, right? right. Your aura. And, yeah. and yeah. that's right. And, and when we're getting this kind of, of trauma, drama, anger, frustration, whatever. Trauma, drama. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> yes. That's what trauma, I use that all the time, trauma, that's actually. Beautiful. Trauma, drama. Uh, and, and some people live in that world, right? Yes. They're just, they're, yes. they're, they're like this, right? That's their and, vibratory and every, effect. Yeah. Yeah. And they wonder why it continues to happen. Like for me, it continues to happen to me. And I will say flat out, it can, it happens to you because you put that vibe out, exactly. you know, and as long as you're doing that, it's going to keep on coming. It's going to, you know, bring you what you, what you want, equal you. Um, so you do have to walk away. And I've had to do that in many relationships and it's been uh, not the most fun part of my life. Well, so I want to, I want to get, I want to go a little bit deeper on that because you gave me a profound awareness with that in my life when you and I did the reading, which by the way, now is almost seven weeks ago. That's how fast time is flying. The world is, I know, crazy. But, but, but you helped me as I told you, and obviously other people in my inner circle close to me have known that my, I've literally just like my vibrations just, you know, even higher since then letting go. and. You know, David Hawkins, obviously, Dr. Hawkins has a book called Letting Go. But yes. as you said, it really is a catharsis that you must, as a human being, accept. Because as you know, we all are going to have people who have been instrumental in some capacities in our life who, as you said, will not, you know, I think the easiest way to say it for people to understand is they won't come to the light. They're just right. not going to do it. And you, and this is one of the things, the learnings that you gave me, which was so profound, was that people like us want to fix it. We want to send the email or the text or call them on the phone and say, how can we fix this? I'm sorry, whatever. And as you said, they're in a place where their vibration is literally repelling you now. So any in getting into their field is bad for you. So that's when you have to recognize, okay, I can just send them love and energy, you know, energetically from afar and not have any direct interaction or communication with them. And then that hopefully, and again, like you said, probably may not do anything, but even if it doesn't, at least you're attempting without interfering with your essentially field. Yes, that's, that's exactly correct. And I even sometimes uh, recommend that we don't even send the love and the light. We send... Right the highest and the best. Right. And the reason I say that is because some people aren't even capable of receiving that. You're right. Of receiving right. that. So uh, it, it bounces back off anyway. It doesn't help. And sending them the highest and the best, it's, it's kind of like Reiki energy. Right. Reiki energy goes where it's, where, where it knows it's needed. It's intelligent energy, right? So this is intelligent energy. And when we send the highest and the, and, and the best, um, that goes to where it needs to go and helps mm -hmm. them just bump up just a little bit because it finds the little cracks. Everybody's got the, the little crack right. in them, right? Right. So it finds the little crack and it just helps pull them up. And if they have enough of those experiences um, on their own, they may make uh, you know, uh, um, a, a bit of a, a step up. Sometimes we just need that whack against the head, some horrible uh, incident or... Uh, you know, someone we love leaves us or, you know, we get in an accident or injury or, you know, illness. And sometimes they're there for that particular purpose. And that's the reason they're there is to help this person get over the hump and, and dig deep. And let me add to that. Um, as I was telling you off air, you know, some of my really close inner circle 
spiritually advanced mentors who are female, and again, because I don't even like to say male or female anymore. It's just divine, masculine, divine. How do I say this? Integrated masculine and feminine energies um, have told me, and again, this, is, this exists for people like you, really anyone who's extremely high vibration, that when you walk into a room, it may even be more a little bit based on more male than female because you guys have um, a, much, a much better from a soul level feeling integration you know, with, when, with other beings because Monica has always attempted to tell me this and I can never really understand it like I do now. But when you raise the vibration of so many people, in the room, you know, when you're one of those type of people where you literally, you know how they say raise all the boats and all the ships in the harbor. And I've always been blessed to be one of those type of people. I, that's also a weakness because then when I'm in a room with people that are out to get me, I don't have any sense that they're out to get me. So I need, and again, needs a poor choice of word, but having smart, very sage female or again, you know, um, uh, divine, uh, feminine energetics who can sense those <laughs> who probably don't have my best interest at heart, highest and best, as you said, you know, to advise me. And that's where I've made a lot of mistakes because I have a so uh, essentially raised all the ships in the harbor. And then I didn't know. And even then, sometimes, like you said, the crack, those people will absorb that energy and then they will come up and appear to be something that they're really not. So I say all those things because it's very critical to recognize, you know, um, the people in your life who really, truly don't really have your best interest at heart. And especially as you said to me in our, in our call, from a business standpoint, it's really critical to align yourself with the right people. That's right. We have, we, we have to be careful, especially yes. the higher that we, that our vibration goes, the more we will, um, so dark does not exist where there is light. Right. So you can't, so you, you don't necessarily have, uh, uh, you're not attracting darkness at right. all. You're, you're repelling it. So many times people who are of the dark go away on their own, right? right? They can't be near the light. Um, and, and when we raise our vibration, that's what we are. But we also have the people who um, have that piece of them that want to snuff out the light. Exactly. Right. And, and, and they will do whatever it takes. And they, they maybe sometimes they're not even aware, you know, that, um, and which is why I'm all about doing clearings. Like right. I have clearing and I do it every day. Every right. time I do a session, every time I go out in public, I do a clearing on right. myself and there's two or three different ways to do that. But everyone should be doing that. Right. Yes. Because, uh, there there's, there's, uh, and I'm not a believer in, you know, uh, I don't do a lot of evil stuff. Like I don't get into any of that stuff, yeah. but we do have to be careful when we become um, more light, more yes. higher vibration. Yes. Um, so yeah. being careful about that is, is just being smart. So before the show's over, I want you to, if you're okay with it, give a couple of clearings that you do. Cause that'll be really amazing for people. And yes, I'm, I'm in total agreement, but let's talk a little bit about being an Akashic records guide. First, let's go really basic and just talk about what is the Akashic Records and how did you become an Akashic Records guide? Okay. So the Akashic Records is a, and uh, you know, there, there's two or three different ways to, you know, explain it based on different people. For sure. my, my teacher uh, was Maureen St. Germain, which is how you found me, yep. right through her book, I believe, yes. Uh, and, um, and so, but basically I've read a lot about all of this and Akashic Records comes up in, in about every modality that you can possibly imagine because, uh, because it's a fact that our, uh, our lives, we have a kind of a personal Akash that, that lives in our DNA. And then we have the, the official, like the one that, you know, it's like having uh, data in the cloud, right? There's the big one, which is the one I go into, right? When our, our insight and our, our intuition and our ourselves is many times um, first focusing on our own um, internal. But it's basically uh, a place that all big events and de decisions and choices of every lifetime um, are stored. It's a, uh, a library, if right. you will. Um, but it's energetic, right? 
uh, now there's, there's some that say that uh, the crystalline grid in the center of the earth is holding a lot of that. Some people say the whales hold uh, a lot of that, that that's their, that they hold this, this um, energetic energy. So, you know, there's other things out there. Um, uh, so that's what the Akashic Records is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a place um, energetically that holds our lifetimes. Right. It's a living library of all past, future, and current experiences, essentially. That's exactly right, yes. And it, ha it also, uh, not just for us, it also has uh, the earth, um, you know, what the earth has been through, different places in the earth. So all of this, you know, uh, battles, you, know, you name it, right? Uh, good things, bad things. Right. Uh, it's, it's all out there. So... What else did you ask? Uh, just how, so then how did you, obviously working with Maureen St. Germain, but how did you become an Akashic Records reader? What did, what kind of work did you do to, to, to get there? Yes. So, um, so I read a lot of books, a lot, a lot of books. And I chose Maureen. I actually interviewed several teachers and I chose Maureen for several reasons. Um, uh, one of which I didn't have time to fly somewhere and spend a week, um, <laughs> even though that might've been. That might have been more fun. But you read her books uh, and they really do touch you. Because my, my wife and I, Monica, is really into Maureen now too. But like, yeah. they really for, for, again, this is my opinion, but for advanced, spiritually aware people, she does resonate deep, right? She does. And, and she has, uh, I mean, her books, I've read all of her books, of right, course. Uh, and I even read them all before I even took her, her class um, to, to, do, to be a guide. And if, in the beginning, I, I wanted to be a guide I didn't want to be a guide for other people. I just wanted to learn this myself. Right. Um, but as I was in the middle of the training, I decided to, I wanted to go on to the next, you know, there's three levels uh, of training. I wanted to go to the next one. And uh, then we started doing uh, records readings on each other. So that was part of our training. And then to become a certified uh, trainer, there's <laughs> many things that you jump through, but the, uh, you have to do 15 uh, records and, and have people give you um, uh, actual um, feedback on it. And it has to be good, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. and then you have to actually do a re record reading for Maureen St. Germain. I was literally just, we were so connected. It was a Vulcan mind melt. I was like, okay, so like, is her energy <laughs> like my energy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. She's human. She puts her pants on the same way that we all do. She had the same kind of questions that we all do. She's beautiful. human. Uh, and, and it was, and it was a beautiful experience, but it was, it, but it was just like, uh, you know, I, I was, you know, nervous myself, right? Sure. Because this is the guru, right? Right. But, uh, but, but, but when you're actually in the records, you know, they, they're not bowing down and doing yeah, anything crazy, right? They're just answering the questions just, and, and questions are the questions, right? Because we're all human. So, um, you know, but you know, from, she's building a uh, community uh, of, like you said, raising the boats. She wants, uh, as I do, uh, in fact, we just had a conversation this morning about this, that uh, we're going to, you know, as many people as we can, you know, teach them, I want to become a trainer so I can train people to read their own Akashic records. Um, and as many people, we can do this, whether it's your higher self or however you get in touch with you, mm -hmm. this is is a huge piece of this time that we're in right now this this transitional big yeah. moment right yes. the energies are there for it the veil has thinned uh everything is in place and now is the time so um uh, you know again i want to help her by building this um uh, organization where we bring a lot of people in to learn about I'll just let you know I'm raising my hand I'm, I'm volunteering and my wife is volunteering so if you guys need help just reach out awesome. to have uh, Maureen reach out to us I mean I, but I, I'm with you I don't want to interrupt you but uh, yeah. the, the earth is changing we are going to get to that that's going to be a topic but uh, yeah I just want to say that we're hand raising <laughs> all right you got it absolutely and she um, did ask me yeah she she did ask me uh, if I was going to be doing the uh, podcast and I said oh yeah it's next, next week and then <laughs> a few minutes later you're like are you ready <laughs> <laughs> no coincidences that's right um, beautiful so yeah I mean I'd love to do one with her too at some point and maybe even I could do it with her and you and Monica we could all do it, it would be profound probably but that uh, would be fun okay, oh so, that would be very fun yeah that would be amazing so so then um 
on becoming a shaman. Well, and, and, and I have so many questions that I could ask you about that, but um, let's just go back to what you just said. Let's talk about what really, really matters, right? The energies of earth right now. Um, you know, my awareness, my knowings, my readings, the learnings that I've done, my meditations, my contemplations tell me that, you know, we are at that time, the processional time, you know, if you consider like in the equinoxes where we're very, very close to what, you know, the ancient sages, the ancient texts, whatever, you know, talk about, there's so many names for it, right? They call it the ascension, they call it the transfiguration, um, you know, uh, the ascendancy, I mean, there's, you know, from a, and I hate bringing religious, um, texts in there, but you know, they talk about the rapture. There's so many different statements from so many different modes of thought and learning. Um, but as I recognize it in my, you know, intuition and, and knowings, um, you're right. It, it's very, very close. I don't think really people truly understand what it means. Um, as I've learned it, you know, and you and I talked about this on our reading, it's not spaceships coming down to save people, Correct. right? It's as Maureen has decoded very, very well in her book, Waking Up in 5D, it's literally phasing from a duality, karmic, third dimensional existence into a higher frequency where karma and duality and shame and fear and all those things don't truly exist anymore, but you as a being, have to get your vibration to a level where you can make that phase shift. Now, obviously there are debates in the spiritual community of people that know these things that some say, Oh, everybody's going to get raised, you know, due to the work of very advanced high vibrational beings, blah, blah, blah. And then there's also people saying, Oh no, that's not the way it works. You know, and then they go to the Bible stories of the wheat, what we separated from the tares. So there's a lot of different conflicting stories, feedback, Intel going around. And again, I'm, it's an opinion, I know question, but as you explained it to me, which I thought you did a really good job of, as the energy changes, we will see massive um, events. And I think you said it perfect to me. You said people will be opting out of the third dimension who are vibrating really, really, really low because they're in pain, right? They cannot handle, when you're in low vibration, let's, let's clarify that. When you're in low vibration, you can't even handle this energy. This energy will make you nuts. Your relationship will fall apart. You'll, you'll be physically sick. Uh, you will be in pain. And again, all the things, you know, resistance, right? You will have so much resistance that it will cause all these problems. So you said to me, which I thought was profound, was that there would be events. And here we are. Not even two weeks later, the coronavirus becomes public. We find out about this, right? Now, again, nobody knows. And obviously, today is February 20th. By the way, today is 0 2 20 2020. I know, I know. A very high energetic That's uh, right. of the earth. And so again, no coincidence that you and That's I. That's right. Monica said that to me this morning. She's in Iceland and she's been with her son there for like nine, uh, I'm sorry, 11 days. So she's flying back tonight. But she sent that to me and she's like, make a profound meditation about that because the energies are insane. And I was like, oh my God, I'm doing Tina's podcast. <laughs> That's right. So and we no have a new Yeah, and we have a new moon. Exactly. So, so much to talk about. So with all of that said, um, what do you think is going to happen? And again, it's opinion question, but what do you think happens over the next two, three to five years on, on planet earth? Yeah. Well, yeah. Again, you're right. This is, this is uh, an opinion. Um, I have not had time, but I, but one of the things that I want to do is, is go into the Akashic records and begin um, weekly or monthly um, questions about the earth because yeah. I'm so connected to it. But oh. to answer your question, uh, I believe that the, the earth is going through its own 3D to 5D changes. Absolutely. I also yes. believe that the earth started out as 5D, yep. along with some of the original cultures that we had. Yes. Uh, and, and that we basically did this to ourselves, right? Yep. All of consciousness. Yep, That's all right. of consciousness. 100%. Yes. So now what this whole, this whole thing is just to bring us back. Right. And in order for us to do that, you know, because we're so connected, you know, I'm a big proponent of grounding, you know, making sure that we Absolutely. have, uh, I don't think it's safe for us to be on big, tall buildings way above the earth. I think it's, it, it you know, it's closest we can get to the earth as possible, right? Because 100%, our, heart being, 100 yeah, our heart frequency is the same as the Schumann resonance. There's yep. no accidents here. 
Yep. So um, anyway, so the, the earth has to change for us, right? Because we're doing this together. Yes. So that's why I think there's all of this crazy town. That's why I just, my daughter's in South uh, North Carolina and she goes, we're supposed to have this huge uh, snowstorm today. I'm going to get the kids. And I go, yep, we're in crazy town. Because that's what's happening yes. right now. Is Earth is changing, now. yes. That's yes. right. Um, and so uh, uh, we're getting these big extremes, right? Extreme cold, extreme warm. Extreme, there is no yes. global warming, in yes. my opinion. Right. No, no, no. Uh, it's, there, it's actually a fact. There's no, there is none. Yes. It's just, it, like you said, there's there's no this change of energy from the cosmos hitting the planet, and the planet is metamorphosizing. Right. Correct. That's exactly right. So we've got all that going on, and then we've got our own vibration raising. So we're all in this together, right? We even have the animals and everyone, and they're in there. There, you know, even if you go to Australia, uh, the, the fires in Australia, everything is happening on purpose. Yes, everything, totally, there is no, totally. There are no accidents. Right. This is what's happening, and yes, we will have some certain um, species go extinct, but we will also have some new species. Right. You know, things, things are, this is all part of, things don't stay the same right. in our lives on the earth. And this is just a really big change, right? Yes. This is a lot going on in a very short amount of time. It's not right. slow. Right. And we even have the sun going into solar minimum. So, so we, we now have this, this extra, you know, uh, energy coming from the sun. Right. You know, it, it, it is crazy town. That's what yes. I'm it's totally crazy town. <laughs> So, but it's exciting. See, you know, I've been, my kids used to always make fun of me because I drove around with an earthquake kit in my car for, and I grew up in Washington state, right? We were right. always in California. Um, and and they, they were like, mom, what is wrong with you? And I would say, I don't really know. I Be just prepared. know I need yeah. to have it. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like I was a prepper. It's just that I needed to know I had enough basics to take care of my children. Yeah, you so, should have a plan. I put that on Twitter yesterday. And again, yeah. I'll just say it. And I'm not a fear monger. And I, I know you're not either. Yeah. And we're not preppers. But it's true. If you really pay attention, and obviously very smart people are now saying this, but the China thing, whatever it is, and no one knows, it's completely like being blocked off. But if it is part of this metamorphosis of the earth and the clearing, then yes, people are going to die. And... We're also going to have, like you said, wide scale sweeping change. So be prepared, right? And what I mean by that is, is we already know the supply chain because of China's manufacturing capacity is disrupted now. And we have all these people in the United States who are like existing, you know, in their fairy tale, you know, sleeper mode realms of like, oh, la di da, watch the sports, you know, watch our reality TV. But in like three or four weeks, and again, I'm not, this is not fear and gloom and doom. And again, it's February 20th. We're going to have supply chain disruption. And that means exactly. that you're not going to have your groceries. There's going to be drugs that are going to be out. There's going to be a lot of disruptions to our way of life. So are you prepared now versus reacting then when people yes. in the news are on telling us, oh, there's no tampons at Walmart? That's right. Right. And we are on the same level. I was just going to talk about the um, the... If, if there was one thing that I could wish for all of us, um, as far as a movement is concerned, I would want it to be sustainable communities. Exactly. Uh, where, where communities are working together to- Tina, grow. I think that's where it's going to go. I don't think that there is any other option. I think that technology is dark. We all know that. Like you and I, this is beneficial. We're having this call. But yep. the people, quote unquote, I use the term people loosely, behind dark technology it cannot continue. They want to literally make us non-human anymore. So all of this has to go away. But, you know, what is the natural evolution of it going away? And it's what you just said. Sustainable, ecological, living off of the great abundant earth communities. That's how it has to happen. That's right. And we all have to have some land around us so that we can do so. Know. Um, you know, I think the cities are, are going to, people are going to start moving out of the cities. They're Not done. just because you're so high up but because yeah. you don't have the ability to get uh, what it is that you need. So That's totally true. Uh, and again, the, yeah, I'm, I don't do the whole fear thing either, but I'm just being um, using my intuition uh, yeah. that this is something we need to, because when things are changing, 
um, as we know, when the pendulum goes from swings from one side to the other, in the middle is chaos. Yeah, you know, it's, absolutely. It's, it's not going to be fun for a while. No, it's not going to be. And you know, I, I, you know, I even told Monica, you know, she's like I told you, she's flying back today. Actually, she just left. Her flight left like 20 minutes ago, and she flies from Iceland to Seattle, and then they have a layover, and then they get back to LA tonight at like 10:30. But I said, you do realize. <laughs> Again, I know this is going to sound crazy. Maybe not, because by the time it comes out, maybe maybe technology and it's all gone anyway. We don't have electricity. This is just you and me talking. But, I mean, I, it's true. I mean, I, I told her, I was like, you know, this may be the last international flight that you and I make in a long time. Or not, I'm not on it, but you, that you're on it. Because her and I are supposed to go to Mexico on March 10th um, for some outreach work down there. And I say, like, dude, that's four weeks away. And at the rate things are going, if, if you're paying attention to international travel right now, it's literally mayhem in international travel because of the virus. So it's like I said, we may not be able to even fly out of the United States. You know, everybody talks about Trump's building a wall. Well, maybe, we, maybe the wall was not to keep people out, but to keep people in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so I have like, a slightly different take on the whole uh, coronavirus thing. Please and give I it have to not- me. Well, I have not done my homework. So this is just, again, my intuition. This is only my intuition. Um, I want to make that very clear. I have sure. nothing to back any of this up. I, but I get a feeling that this is just more fear stuff. And I would, I would be interested to see how many people die of the flu every year on average anyway. And, and this, and there's something about me and, and I have three or four international flights coming up. By the way, you're I'm probably right. Bali, uh, I, I am going to Bali, which is pretty darn close. Right. And they even said there was some issues there, but I don't have a fear around it. And there's a reason I don't have a fear around it. It's because I'm connected to, to something and, um, and nothing's telling me don't go. Nothing's telling me that. That's and awesome. I'm pretty good about that stuff. That's and awesome. then I'm also going to back to Peru. Uh, this year yeah and so you know for some reason I think this is going to blow over I I feel like this is not and I'm not a psychic I, I hope you're right I mean I absolutely psychic. hope you're right I do think it's yeah. all inflated I just think that if anything it's the you know the the bad guys last this last ditch effort to destroy the global economy that's what I think yeah. they're attempting to do and you're right I mean they, it may not be anything as bad as we have been led to believe regarding the virus. But what I am seeing, and again, I'm affected as a businessman in certain things that I'm due, the supply side of things is disrupted. And so that's going to cause, yeah, that's going to cause some disconnection is is probably the best word to use, like in the economy and how that, you know, meanders or how that evolves. I don't know, but I agree with you. I, everything is always designed to create the most fear. Because we know that right. certain pe- certain people, beings, whatever, feed on the fear, the etheric energy. Um, right. So you're right. You know, keep your head about you. It's interesting time to be alive, right? That's what we know. It's 2020. We're in the new earth energy. It's washing over the planet. You know, it can go any way. But obviously, if you focus on staying centered, grounded, as you said, raising your vibration, clear and, co- you know, capacitive heart, um, things should work That's out right. well. And listening to the messages that you're getting because you know we're all individuals even though we're on the the same path um and you know listening to those messages that we're getting you know we're going to be told in some way don't get on that plane uh it's absolutely true if you're if you're listening you know um you just you just have to listen and um and it's not that difficult it takes it takes some time and effort and, so uh, so, and so on, on that, and I told you this before, when I read Maureen's book last year, Waking Up in 5D, at the beginning of last year, um, I started using those tests, which I now have in my calendar. I use them every day. Higher self, is it in my highest and best interest to, and blank, right? And I yes. literally did it for me and Monica and my master integrator IT person when we went to Puerto Rico in September of last year, right before they had that, you know, tropical depression. And I asked and I, 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 and I got really good at it. And literally on the music came, I think I told you this, but on the music came Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers fly away. Beautiful. Oh, I got oh those, God. I got those, uh, truth it was bumps. unbelievable. Yes. It was unbelievable. I was yes. like, yes, I'm, I'm able to do it, but you're right. You Thank can you. absolutely get the yeah. answers. You can absolutely yeah. get the answers, but you have to learn and to connect to your higher self. That's right. 
and it comes in uh, in not regular ways. People ask me all the time, you know, how how do I get the messages? And uh, I get them in many different ways. So sometimes the words just come out of my mouth in, yep. in like these little chunks, as you know, these little, you know, chunks of uh, little concepts is what I call them, little bites, sound bites. And then, uh, but I don't cognize it. I don't think about them first. But I also get physical feelings. Right. And I also get pictures. But I, I also tell people it comes through songs. Some people yes. say, I get this song stuck in my mind. And I say, well, why don't you do or think about what it is that the song is saying? And then it should go away. Right. Um, because it, you know, yes, there's, there's certain songs that stick with us and longer, but there's reasons why a particular one of those songs is doing that. So listen to the words and acknowledge it and see if there's some action you could be taking um, because it comes or you could find a, you know, a flat rock that means something to you. I see my son in the dragonflies. Uh, you know, there's just um, so many different ways that we get the information. It's not just our head. There's no, you know, booming voice. Um, it's usually very quiet and it's usually very one or two words in, in a very loving way. It's not the one in your brain that's saying, be careful of that. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> Remember when you did that? You know, it's not that fear part. Right. No, 100%. This has been such an amazing podcast. I mean, I could talk to you all day, but unfortunately, the audience loses their minds after about 45 minutes because yeah. they're so distracted by technology. But before we go, um, I want you to give a couple of exercises, one or two on clearing and how important they are. And then also after, I want you to obviously let people know how they can work with you. And let me just say, I highly recommend if you watch this podcast and you have any inclination to what her and I have been talking about today as being true, that you reach out to her and work with her because she profoundly impacted me. She profoundly impacted Monica. She profoundly impacted everybody that I work with. I mean, I'm literally like mandating to the people I work with, you're going to do it. And if you tell me you can't afford her, I'm going to pay for it yourself myself. So, but anyway, I, I don't say that to blow smoke up you because I, I say it because it's true and you really, really helped me. And like I said, my soul, my vibration, whatever, my path is just really cleared since I started working with you. Again, it wasn't that long ago, seven weeks ago, but okay. So give us some, um, give us some exercises on how well, to I'm just, I'm going to send people to Maureen St. Germain because that's okay. where the biggest one that I think, and they can watch her do it. Sure. Um, this is a YouTube um, uh, Archangel Michael clearing. And okay, so I'll put the link, by the way, in the podcast okay. so that everybody has access to Good. it. Yeah, you can talk about it. Yeah, and, that, and I do that every, uh, constantly. But I also make my own um, essence spray, that, and I spray my home with, with um, you know, a clearing spray, basically, and it's my own, you know, concoction uh, that makes me happy and comfortable and smells good. Um, and then I also use sage. Uh, in my house, when I've had, like this weekend, I'm doing a fire ceremony. And next weekend, I'm doing a drum making nice. uh, uh, workshop. So when people leave, I will sage my entire house and things like that before they get there. Um, so, uh, and I recommend doing that to ourselves, right? Yeah. So um, those are all extremely- How often do you recommend saging? Because we sage very often too. Like this is my office. I sage, you know, I did my sage is actually when I came in this morning, it's sitting there. But um, how often do you recommend people sage their uh, living quarters? I would, I would say there's two, there's two um, uh, catalysts for me to sage. One is when I've had people here, particularly if there's somebody I don't really know and I don't really, <laughs> you know, like they, they, they're here for- Everything is energy, by the way. Let's be right. very clear. And your right. aura- you know, you contain energy and we don't know sometimes who's hopping on that energy. That's exactly right. Cause they, they can hop on. So, um, so I do the, so the clearing, which, which I actually bought, I don't have one here, but uh, I don't have it right here, but I actually bought this. Um, I'm going to actually start selling these, uh, because I love them so much. They're these long lit blue swords. Oh, wow. For my clear for my clearing because I've been using a knife like Maureen Saint Germain does, right. but I just love this blue light saber, little saber light. I was about and to say it's, it's the force. <laughs> it is, it is, and so and really it's about it, it's about the intention more it's than exactly having a knife. Absolutely right. So um, plus it's longer than any knife that I want to have hanging around in my That's house. Awesome. 
So, so in behind your neck is really important to get. Does it actually glow they, and light up? I mean, I'm going to, it glows. Yeah. I, I'll show it to you if you want. We'll, we'll yeah, I'll look sure. at it. I'll, it's, I think it's just right in the other room. Okay. Anyway, it's very fun. Beautiful. Um, and so I've been playing with that. So that's been, uh, but anyway, back to your question. So it's either somebody has been in my home that, um, uh, or somebody's, yeah. uh, and I will always sage after that. Right. Uh, and then, or I go out into public and, uh, if I, if I'm feeling a little crabby when I get home, I always think, okay, this is interesting. And I'll sage or I'll do, you know, because sometimes, you, you know, stuff happens. Yeah, it um, definitely does. But, but I'm not a zealot about it. You know, I'm really not a zealot about anything. I kind of like just use my intuition about it, you know, and, right, and, I, right. and, and so it's not a timing thing. Um, so I have a treatment room where I do, I do this shaman uh, thing called illumination. And this is my words only. This is not official. Um, but it's my, it's the, to me, it's the shaman rendition of Reiki. Um, and it's super fabulous. I just love it. It's, it's very, you know, really moves the energy because you take a rattle and you rattle it around the people and it shakes up their field. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and if you have anything in your field, that's not great. It, and I'm not talking about entities or anything. I'm just talking about emotions or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. shakes it all up. It's awesome. So what, what are the um, words, if you don't mind, what are the words that you use? Do you have them written down or you have specific words uh, in that? I, I do have I do have things written down, but I pretty much start everything with um, uh, white light of the Holy Spirit. Um, I kind of always start that way with sure. pretty much everything. Maureen has some beautiful words right. with hers. I use hers a lot. Um, one of the ones I'm going to put my glasses on. Um, one of the the things that I love every time I'm going to do, and this is before uh, I may do it on. I may do do it with people, but. Uh, one of them is I ask for a direct connect for each person present to his or her own higher self. I ask for a direct connect between each one and their higher self that they might serve one another perfectly. And I ask for a direct connect between my higher self and the higher self with everyone I speak with that I might serve perfectly. So before mm -hmm. I'm going to be with people, I really like saying that. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a very good one. And, and she has, you know, there, there's another one that's a little bit long, so I won't read it to you, but I've also been to great. I have, I have one of hers. I'll read it. Um, okay. Dear God, angels and guides, I request to attend the most evolved place I may move to with my consciousness for the purpose of clarity about my mission, my purpose and service. Let me learn and understand better what I need to achieve my fullest potential. Please assist me in any upgrades that may be possible and offer me your highest level of divine protection. So that was from her book, um, three, uh, 5D. And I, you know, I added a little bit of that to make mine, but um, yeah, she has a lot yeah. of them. I mean, I like she, what you said too. I have them in yeah, my calendar. And I, and I, I pull in some of my shaman stuff now because I, you know, of course, bless the North, South, East and West and sure. um, the, ele the elements. And so, um, you know, I'm pulling this all together. So I feel like I'm a shaman, heart math, Akashic records package. It's beautiful. All those things. Okay. So you are an amazing human being and I have a profound love in my heart for everything you're doing and our connection. And I'm very grateful to be connected to you. How can people who watch this podcast work with you? Well, obviously on uh, Maureen St. Germain's uh, website, I'm a guide uh, with her, part of her uh, group. I am also doing uh, many things on, of my own and I have my own website, which is heart, soul, um, convergence.com. Okay. Um, and, or you can email me and cause I also have another website that I'm working on called healing heartist. Cause I'm also an artist. That's beautiful um, by the way. I, uh, my house is filled with, with stuff, um, because I don't have any other place to put it <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, uh, but it's called healing heartist and that website will be available at, um, at, at the end of March. Um, and um, so I could be emailed at Tina, T-E-E-N-A, uh, at healingheartist.com. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Tina, I really, truly appreciate you coming on this podcast today. I mean, I this is one you. of the best podcasts. This is one of the best podcasts that I've actually personally ever done because I've interviewed so many people, you know, in the thought leadership space, but no one is spiritually aware and connected as you are. And obviously we 
it, it, it was so good because you and I are very heart connected right now. Yeah. And we yeah. talked a lot, a lot of things, and I think we covered a lot of ground. So again, uh, namaste. Thank you so much. And let me just end this podcast by just saying, guys and gals, please uh, support the amazing people who come on the show. You know, she just gave you healingheartist.com and you can email her at Tina, T-E-N-A, at healingheartist.com. Um, she will, you know, talk to you about all the different things that she does. I highly recommend everyone do an Akashic Record reading with her. You will learn so much about your current soul's experience and also a lot of things that may or may not be blocking you. So let me just end the show by saying, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Thank you guys.